Hello, and welcome to this What's New video for Compress 2019 Build 7900. My name is Matt Hyland, I'm the General Manager here at Codor, and today I'm going to go through some of the new features that we've released for you in this build. So let's get started. So as you guys can see right in front of you, we've got an Appendix 13 air-cooled exchanger. So we've added in the Appendix 13 calculations with emphasis on the API 661 requirements. Now the modeling for this is going to be a little bit different. It's actually going to be a lot easier than modeling all the components. So let's go through that. So what I'm going to do is just start a new Division 1 file by clicking on my Division 1 document. So as you can see, our blank screen, our modeling screen shows up. But what we're going to do is under the component menu, you're going to see down here there's an air-cooled exchanger. Just click on this and the air-cooled exchanger is going to pop up in front of you. Now what we've done here is any of the changes that need to be made to this will be done over here on our specification sheet data pane right here. So if you open up Compress and it's not there, what we can do is just right click up on anywhere on the top here, select the specification sheet data pane, and it'll come up and you can pin it to this, uh, pin it to it or you can have it hover over the side, whatever you guys want to do. Now in terms of the inputs, uh, again, if this is a 661 requirement, we're going to make sure that's checked. That's actually checked by default. And then in terms of the actual geometry for the exchanger, that's going to be all done down here. Let's pull this open. So you, again, we've got our material scheme. So if, you know you want to change it from a carbon steel scheme to a stainless steel, you know we've got the material scheme available, then our pressure temperature. But then in terms of the geometry, the configurations, the tubes, the number of passes, we can adjust that all down here. And you can see I'm just putting in some numbers here just to show you guys what this will look like. And then you're going to adjust here. So instead of going into the individual components, you can make all the changes on your specification sheet data pane. And again, this is something we added in the last build, and you can certainly use it for any of the other modeling um, that you might have as well. So that's available for you now as well. Really excited to bring this feature to you. We hope you guys find it really, really useful. Now, the next thing I want to get into are the, the PCC1 Appendix O requirements. Uh, it's been asked for for a little while, and we put them in. Uh, so I'll switch over to my sample file here. Now, this is primarily going to come up with your heat exchangers, but again, I'm just going to use these simple body flanges as an example. So when you right click on your flange, whether this is going to be an Appendix 2 flange or standard B16-5 flange, um, you're going to have the option of applying the uh, Appendix O calculations. And what are the Appendix O calculations? If this is the first time you're hearing about it, it's the bolt assembly stress um, determination. So I'm going to take this Appendix 2 flange here. Uh, I've already got it set up, so I'll just click Next. And on the second screen on the Appendix 2 flange, it's actually going to be a little checkbox here. It says apply ASME PCC-1 Appendix O bolt stress determination. So you check that, we click next, and then we're going to come up to the Appendix O dialog right here. Now we've got two methods available for you. We have the simple method, which really just asks us for the nut factor as well as the tar target assembly gasket stress. Um, and we enter those in and we can run the simple calculations. Or we have the a little bit more involved joint component um, value. Now the values that we default here are the ones that came right out of uh, PCC-1. Uh, um, but you can manipulate them, change them, things like that. But we set it up here. We click OK. And as always, we just finish the dialog. And then those calculations are going to be available to us in the output report. Now for the B16-5 flanges, same thing. I'll just right click on it. And then the checkbox for it will be located right on the first page right here. And then you can select the PCC1 inputs. And again, same as the Appendix 2. We just need to know the inputs, and then we'll run the calculations for them. So that's going to be available for you. Now, in terms of some productivity enhancements, one thing that we've done here is I'm going to open up a... Uh, another file here is we've added in what we call the quick design feature and this is a really simple feature um, now if some of you are familiar with our inspect program um, and how we model our B313 piping it's a similar methodology where we just snap components in place so what you'll do is in, over here on the top uh, right hand corner where I have it there's the option to activate quick design mode so I'm gonna check this and I'm gonna just uh, place my first head right there and my cylinder. Now if you see these red arrows, that means we're going to snap it right there. So there's the cylinder. And then for the next cylinder, you, can, you have a choice. Do you want to put it on the top 
or on the bottom like so and we can start building out our model like that so and I'll just take a uh, support skirt here the support skirt it's great because it adds the base ring for us as well and you can see here in the top right you've got choices of changing the um, number of bolts if you want to take the base ring off if it's a single double uh, base plate anything like that click next click OK and it's done so again productivity enhancements now one feature that I really like here is once we start adding nozzles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the function key F2 that's the shortcut key for our nozzle so I'm going to press that and I'm going to drag and drop my nozzle wherever I want. So you can see here it's really nice. We've got the dimensions. So you can get a rough idea of where you want to put the nozzle. And we'll just drop it right there. But before I do that, again, look at the top right hand corner here. We can adjust the size. You can actually do this by scrolling. If you have a mouse wheel on your mouse, you can just scroll it and it'll actually adjust the size. You can change the type if you want and also add a flange here as well so you don't need to go in afterwards and add a flange. But I'm just going to drop it and there's your nozzle. Now I'm going to add another one on, a couple here just to show you the productivity. Now a new feature that we've added in here is the piping components I guess if you, if you want to call them that. But um, it's a new toolbar so if you have pipe, if you've got elbows, reducers, we can now put reducers on these nozzles, we can do that. So if I click on the B169 reducer, I can snap it onto the end, and again, with my mouse wheel, I can scroll through the sizes available. So that's one. Let's say I've got one with a pipe. I'll put the elbow there, and then I'll put my pipe on, and I can adjust the length with my mouse wheel. And for fun, let's put another elbow there. Just finish up the elbow and do that. Now we can add up to five components um, for this as well for you guys. Now if you model them here, again they're going to be run under our Division 1 document which means it's going to be ha handled under UG44. But you have the av availability there for the model. So those are some of the um, quick design features that we've added. I think it's a great feature. Um, I've been using extensively for a lot of our testing on our coder interface just for modeling quick sample files and I've really really enjoyed it. So again I hope you do too. Um, other things that are available, uh, Appendix 2 flanges are available, so if you do add a, a body flange to this, we'll actually add the mating flange for you as well. Um, there's elbow connections, nozzles, uh, both uh, formed heads, uh, uh, both types of flanges, cylinders, reducers, things like that. So pretty much any of the components on the side can be used as your quick design feature as well. Now one of the other things I wanted to show you guys quickly were some of the couplings that we've, we've made some changes to the, the nozzle dialog. So again, I'll just put a nozzle right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into this nozzle, so I'm going to right click on it and just kind of go through this with you quickly. So we do have the option for a coupling here and you can do full or half and then set on. And then for the coupling end connection, they can be threaded or socket welded, um, however you have it here, but we'll just choose threaded and then we're going to click next and then come in here. So what we've done here is with the set-in couplings, um, actually, let me just change this back to set-on, or set-in, sorry. Um, with the set-in couplings, they can now be attached with a combination of either full or partial penetration and lower groove welds um, and internal projections with lower fillets. So that's a mouthful, but what does that mean? What that is going to allow you to do is it's going to give you the configurations to, the con to conform to UW 16.1 sketches Y1, Y2, Z1, and Z2. Um, so it'll give you a, a few more options as well. And then if you specify, I believe, no lower groove well, that's going to conform to UW sketch 16.2 sketch K. So just a couple of other options for you guys. Um, when you're modeling, things like that, just to help you get those configurations um, to help you hit the UW16 sketches. I'll click OK, and there it is. So those are some of the higher level features that we've added in for uh, 2019 uh, Compressed Build 7900. Now, as always, if you want to see a full listing of everything that we've uh, we've added, as well as any maintenance fixes, very easily, you just come up here to the Help menu 
and select View History. It'll take you to your history. It'll take you to our history document, and you can review any of the changes that we've made in there. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Sales at CodeWord.com um, or give us a call at 941-927-2670, and one of us will be happy to go over any of the new features for you, uh, set up demos, anything like that. But thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.